Hello Aries. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitsche here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship in the past. This could be a current relationship as well. For others of you, this could be a situationship. For a small portion of you, this could be an individual who you've met and you know there's a whole lot of chemistry, there's a whole lot of love, but no one's speaking up. And there is a whole lot of love here, but there are boundaries. Oh boy. Yikes. One second. Hmm. Quite interesting. So, anger and rage. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have, and I do have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some clarity based on what comes up today. Here we have first card is the strongest boundaries, followed by love, opening, order, hearth and home surrender, abundance, anger, and rage. And then we have sexuality under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Aries, this distance, these boundaries, this separation, I'm finding it to be unbearable. I have put up boundaries on purpose though, because there's too many feelings that come and go through me for you. Too much has happened between us. And now I realize that you make me emotionally vulnerable and weak in the knees. And I've realized that I do love you. I realize now that I am in love with you. This love is pure. It's true. It's clean. It's sacred. This is unconditional love. No matter what happens, it's just there. It's a constant. It does not change. And yes, there are certain things that I hid a while ago. I did not tell you the truth. I was not open to you. And I did not express myself to you fully. These are certain things that I realize now certain things I should have done. I just never did. But I'm afraid as well. Even though I want to open up to you, I'm afraid of what you might learn. What my deepest desires are and what they were. What were my fears? What are the things that I hide? Do I really want to open up to you? There's a part of me that is at a crossroads. 
I don't know which way to turn. Should I go forwards? Backwards, left or right? I don't know. Right now, I'm stuck. Stuck in a spot where, for me, it's comfortable. But anything beyond my reach is very uncomfortable. I try to look forwards, backwards, left or right, and everything around me is full of thick fog. I'm surrounded. And I want to make a choice. I want to make a move, but I am unable to. Because I can't make a move, I stay dormant. This connection just is stagnant. There's no movement. Nothing. And you wonder, where are we headed? Is anything even happening? The problem is, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to make a move. Because if I do, I might mess things up. And right now, there's a lack of clarity and a lack of understanding in my mind, in my heart, about this, about us, about everything. There's no doubt. You are my hearth and home. Wherever you are, that is where my home is. When I'm lost, you have been that guiding light. And when I'm cold, you have been that light that has kept me warm. And I have surrendered to you now. Maybe you don't even know this. I have surrendered my mind, my heart, my body, to you. All the things that I have done. All the things that I have said. I do regret that. Now, I give to you and surrender my mind, my heart, my body. Because I love you. And I want to be with you. If you lead, I will follow. Things were different before, but now, now they're quite different. I also feel the sense of abundance. I feel that in this connection, you and I have been trying to settle down in our own ways, trying to make materialistic gain. Money sometimes has been an issue. And I know settling down, gaining wisdom, fulfilling and exceeding the potential that I have, that is hard, it's difficult. But there's a part of me that wants to try. And I understand, because of the lack of movement in this connection, things have gotten very frustrating. I'm angry for the things that I have said and done. I'm agitated and annoyed at the way things turned out. I'm frustrated because I can't see you. I can't be with you. Overall, I obsess over your body, the way you look, your scent, the contours, 
everything about you. I want to be close to you. I want to be intimate with you. And it's hard for me not to think of you in this way. But there is so much passion. And yes, there is lust, but there is also love. It exists. It is true, and it is very strong. Which sometimes scares me. That is also why I have to keep up these boundaries. Because the feelings that I have for you are too intense. All right, Aries. Caramel, I'm seeing caramel, soft like caramel, but this is melted, this is melting. Um, this love is sweet, it's slow, it's, um, yeah, it's slow progress. And sometimes, depending on the mood and the weather, it hardens and then it just becomes stuck, just like caramel. But if it's very hot, it flows very fast. This all depends on the both of you, but also your person of interest is very much addicted to you sexually. And it is not just lust, it is love. Here, it's not they just want to do it with you, but they want to make love to you because of these two cards, love and sexuality. The issue here is there is a sense of frustration in this because it could even be sexual frustration. It could even be that. So, take it as it resonates. Let me know in the comments below. Does any of that resonate for you, Crosswatcher? Aries, this may be you. We do reflect and bounce off of each other. <clears throat> Our energies. So, it could be possible. I have here the Lover's Path Tarot. Okay. Oh my. <clears throat> we have here a bunch of things that just fell out. Okay. By order of appearance. So usually I only pick one card. However, you had three cards that popped out. Clearly there's a reason. So, the first set of cards that I just read, that is the present and current status, current situation. These cards, I read a little bit into the past, what happened in the past. This is for those of you that may never have gotten any sort of closure. You wonder what happened in this connection. Maybe this person ghosted you. Maybe they faded. Maybe once in a blue moon they message you. And you wonder what happened. Here we have the Five of Staffs, the Ten of Coins, Princess of Cups, and then we have the Prince of Arrows under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. All right, so let's have a look. Five of Staffs. And remember, I do read these in the reverse. This talks about conflict, competition, and dissension. It talks about how it was needed in this connection, or it's, it was needed, or it's, it is needed, to move beyond petty concerns and worries, and to understand what is really important. It talks about petty disagreements, ego-oriented competition. So here, there was a need to unify forces, but that wasn't happening because there was somebody here arguing over petty Disagreements, there was ego-oriented competition, concerns, worries, conflict. 
arguments. This could be amongst the both of you, two people, or it could also be other people, because for me, the five of staffs also talks about other people. So somebody else may have had some sort of issue regarding their ego and their pride, or there were disagreements with somebody else too. This could be a third party situation. You do have, in this image at least, in the first one, five of staffs, there's three people. So one thing could be that you had one person or multiple amount of people influencing and creating conflict in this connection. The other scenario is that both of you kept getting into arguments, literally. And somebody here has a lot of ego and pride. We have here the Ten of Coins. The Ten of Coins talks about a lack of prosperity, not really wanting to expand. Here we have discontent at home or difficulties with family relationships. Elusive success on the material plane. So it does appear that this person may have wanted to try to have the sense of expansion, work on property, culmination, uh, culmi cu yeah, accumulation, um, and property, and prosperity. However, there is a problem here with family, unhappiness, discontentment at home. This means with people. Now, home doesn't necessarily mean just family. It could also be your family, your friends. It could be people at work, the environment that you're in. Sometimes people stay at work so much that that becomes literally their home. They even sleep there. So certain places, certain locations, certain types of people, they could become your family. And whatever that case is, there was negative feelings that were coming from that. So there's something negative that's happening in that sort of an environment, and it's not coming through, of course, in a positive way because it's negative. But what I'm seeing here is there was unhappiness and difficulties. Now with family relationships, this could be related to the first card, five of staffs, where the people that are causing the problems, and this is going to be just resonating for a handful of you, um, the people that are causing the problems are family related. They're, they're from family. Maybe a sister, a sister-in-law, a mother, or a father, um, could be anybody, an uncle. But somebody here objects to this specific union or this connection. They don't think it's a great idea and they feel it's wrong. And so therefore their ideas and their opinions have been quite negative. Discontentment at home also means that they themselves are sick and tired of life. They're just done. They don't like it. They don't like being around those people anymore. And so they're trying to be a better person. But because charity begins at home or whatever environment you're in, they feel it's hard for them to adjust, to move on, to be somebody else that they are not. They can't act. They don't like acting. It's that sort of thing. It's hard for this person to be somebody they're not. And that comes through into their personality. It just comes from them. So even if they try to act as if everything is okay, it truly isn't because they know it's not okay. And they're not the type of person who's going to be acting. This is something that happened in the past. Then we also have here Princess of Cups. This talks about how this person at some point in time may have given an offer, but it was an empty offer and an empty invitation. Fickleness or immaturity of affection. Inconsistent or unreliable messages. Ambivalence, codependence. So we're talking about an individual who's very fickle. They were immature when they were showing their affection to you. And they were inconsistent and they were unreliable. 
this is somebody that really just followed whatever was going on in their environment. So if they're, if they're people at home ended up saying, you know, don't hang out with this person, they would actually listen and they wouldn't hang out with the person. If they said, come home at this time, they would listen. And that's okay. It's not bad. You know, it's good to listen to people. Um, especially if you know they actually genuinely care, but there's something here where it went above and beyond to the point where your attitude towards this person and towards relationships started to change. And theirs also started to change. There's somebody here who has caused this issue between the both of you. There's a common factor here. Part of it is because of their own upbringing and the issues that they've been through. But the other part is directly other people. Other people have caused this issue. And that's a problem. Now, we also have one more thing here. Where we have this individual who is immature, right? When they are immature, that also means that they are not going to be making their own decisions. They're going to be getting help from others. They're going to be trying to gain that wisdom from others. Why? Because they are immature. They don't know how to make decisions. So what's the best thing that they could do? Talk to others. Now, the problem is when they did talk to others, they're already from some sort of dysfunctional environment. There's something going on here where it was not a healthy environment where they were coming from. And whatever type of environment they were coming from, they're trying to get advice based on that. And the outcome was not good. It's just like what I'm seeing right now. I'm seeing somebody who's very young and youthful and vibrant, but I see them in the dark. I see everything here as a silhouette. I'm So I'm having a vision. This is what I'm talking about. Um, there's a silhouette and there's no white light, but it's a gradient effect. So there's gray all the way to black. And it's as if they're in this tunnel type thing, but it's not going from, from where I'm standing all the way to the end. It's actually going from gray on my right side to on my left side, it's black. That's how I see it. But what I see here is the person where there's the silhouette at the gray area, all they can ever see is from gray to black. All they have known is gray to black. They have never even experienced what white is like because it was never experienced. It was never shown to them. So they cannot compare what white is like because it's not even registered in their brain. All they see is that bracket where we have gray and black. That's it. They don't see anything beyond that. Beyond the right side, there's just a wall. There's nothing beyond that. There's no white. So you're dealing with somebody who has been conditioned in a way where their entire life they've seen certain things in a certain way and they don't go beyond that. That's, it's an issue, but it's hard for them to release themselves from it because that's the way they were born and raised. Whatever the environment they're in right now, they don't have anything else that they can compare it to. And when there is no concept of white when there is no concept of color. How is this person supposed to even know what that is? Because nobody's there to pull them out of that area. Nobody's there to shine that light on them, change that spectrum. No. This person has lived in this type of an area and this type of environment. And this is what they know. This is what they feel comfortable with. This is what makes them feel safe. Not wanting to expand. Fear of expansion. Fear of growth. Fear of something different. Because when there's fear of something different, it means they don't have control over it. Because they don't know how to control it. So you're dealing with somebody who was influenced 
by external factors. They internally were stuck and they were immature or just inexperienced. And they needed the help because they didn't know any better. That's what happened there. We also have here the Prince of Arrows. <clears throat> that was very deep. Prince of Arrows, let's see. Prince of Arrows talks about <clears throat> decisiveness, clarity, and determination. Now we're reading in the reverse. So it would be a lack of decisiveness, not being able to make a decision, right? A lack of clarity. Now remember, you remember I had the order and chaos card. Order card was right there in the beginning. Now that was talking about let's move forward somewhere, but too much fog around so they can't make a decision, right? So there's a lack of clarity, which is exactly what it says here, clarity, and also indecisiveness, not being able to take that path, not being, being able to make that choice. So that was an issue as well in the past. It says here, not understanding a situation as much as one would like to, and feeling unable to stand up for oneself, inarticulate. Feeling unable to stand up for oneself. Now I just feel sad for this person. I know some of you are pissed off and upset, but I genuinely just feel like, wow, this person, they've not really lived their life to the fullest. It may look as if they have, but they don't know a lot and they haven't experienced a lot. And they feel safe in this bubble that they're in. Anything beyond that, they don't even realize the concept. They don't even know that anything else exists beyond that. All right. So what I'm seeing right now before I move forward, because it keeps popping up and it doesn't go away until I say it. Um, so let's say this person was seeing gray, right? It's uh, gray to black. Now for them, a normal life that we see is colored, okay? So for them, that would be um, overwhelming, okay? Passion and love for them is considered neon. And I'm li I was seeing neon glow-in-the-dark kind of neon, but uh, phosphorus type of thing, right? That orange and that green and the pink kind of neon. That is the type of level of colors that would literally short-circuit this person's brain if they were a computer or something. And it's an overload of passion and lust and love. So this person hasn't even gotten to the colored part in their life yet. They haven't even gone through the white to the color. But where you are actually at is that neon. And this person, I mean, they haven't even seen the color. So that, it's so far beyond them. It's not happening. It's, it's, um, it's like they're from a different world. It's almost like that. Like they just don't see it and they don't understand it. They can't comprehend it. So I am seeing different levels here. And those levels, this person's like really down here. And you're at this level where there's that neon, where everything is just brilliant, vibrant, positive. However, this person lives in this tiny bubble where it's just from gray to black and that's it. All right, so I have here the beginner's tarot. I'll be looking into any actions, any plans, any intentions your person of interest may have towards you. Two major arcanas, very nice. Judgment, the sun. Then we have queen of swords. Oh, 
Oh my. The lovers. <laughs> okay, indecisiveness is a choice between two people or a person in a situation. Most likely, however, this is another individual. Then we have Nine of Pentacles under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. Interesting. We have here the judgment that talks about a second chance, wanting a second chance in this connection. Knowing that things before, there was a lack of honesty, there was a lack of openness, but now there's a desire to be more open, to be more honest, to have more transparency going forward. That is a second chance. And the second chance, the feeling of it, it feels as if it's being divinely guided. We also have here the Sun card. The Sun here talks about how in this connection, there's this new feeling of prosperity, joy, growth, happiness. Just ultimate satisfaction. This is something that this person feels they know and they want because they feel that they can have all of this with you. They look forward to it. However, there is hesitation. Because of the things that they have said and done, they feel that now you have become someone who is very cold. It's very difficult for them to reach out to you. It's very difficult for them to connect with you. They find that it's not worth it because no matter what they do, they think nothing can change your perspective, nothing can change your mind. I see here with this card, whatever has happened to you, they feel that they are responsible. So even if, Aries, you are somebody who is very inviting, very warm, and you want to accept this person, they personally feel that that's not going to happen. They feel that they've really screwed things up. Nothing is ever going to be the same. They don't like what they did. And they don't think that they'll be able to get through to you. Because now you have a cold, hard heart. We have the lovers. Your person of interest is now trying to make a choice between you and someone else that they're with. There is a choice here. There is a decision that needs to be made. The problem is this person is, they may love somebody, but they're in love with somebody else. However, it's difficult for them to let go of the other person as well. This could be Absolutely, it could be a third-party situation, three people involved, maybe even four. Or it could be somebody who needs to make a sacrifice between one thing and another. This could be perhaps somebody has gotten a great job, their dream job, somewhere very far away. And they're wondering, should I take that job and leave my special someone? Or should I not? That job itself could be a third party. Here we have also the overall arching theme, the Nine of Pentacles. A lot has happened. And in this connection, there's this understanding that things have moved on, people have moved on, life has changed. This individual now sees you as somebody who is very independent, self-sufficient, self-reliant. You don't need them. You don't need anything. You're thriving and you're good on your own. So why would you even need them? This is what they're thinking. It intimidates them. They do feel intimidated. What I'm seeing here, Aries, is this person going to reach out to you? I don't see it anytime soon. I see this individual making a decision that they do want to be with you. They want a second chance. They feel this is divinely guided. <clears throat> I also see that with the lover's card, they know that they have to make a choice because nothing's going to move on if they don't. However, it doesn't indicate to me that they have made a choice. They're still in the process of making one. 
You remember how there was that sense of indecisiveness? Cloudy fog all around. Well, that's still going on. This person has a choice. They have a path they have to take. They just can't make up their mind. Eventually, one day, they will. People don't stay in that state forever. Here we have, with the Nine of Pentacles, perhaps you have moved on. Perhaps you are thriving now. and Hopefully you are. But if you're not, it doesn't matter because this person still sees you as that. As somebody who is thriving. Somebody who is just above and beyond. They see you as that. All right. I have here Archangel Answer cards. Just going to do a quick prayer. So these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. First card, the strongest we have here, opportunity. Followed by look for a sign. After that, we have wait. Then we have you are ready. Helpful people. Perfect timing. Followed by success. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, we have yes, very positive card. All right. Let's have a look. First card, the strongest. We have here an opportunity that it's going to come to you. This could be abundance related. It could be money related, but it could also be abundance of happiness, joy, prosperity. Remember, you did have the sun card. So there is an opportunity that's going to come to you. We also have here, look for a sign. So don't go out looking for signs. They're going to come to you. You're going to notice them when they do happen. This could be signs and synchronicities, numbers. This could be messages that you read on a billboard. Maybe something just makes sense to you. Lyrics of a song, a certain sentence that just might make sense to you only. Then we have here, it is important for you to wait, however. Patience is a virtue. As upsetting and boring as that sounds, it is. Here we do have wait, so there is going to be a waiting period. Nothing's going to happen in a rush. We have here, in the meantime, you are ready. So the angels here are saying that emotionally, spiritually, and physically, you have gone through a lot over the past while. And going forward, you will be able to tackle all that is going to happen because you are ready. Helpful people. It's important for you now to take a step back and to reconnect with some family, some friends, people that you trust, people that you know, somebody that you can talk to about this situation, because if you don't, you're not going to be able to find that solution. Here with this, helpful people means that you actually need help from people. And people are going to talk to you, they're going to give you some good advice. Now before, there may have been this individual that was talking to others, maybe not so good advice, they were getting but moving forward, it does appear that some advice is going to be given that's going to be good and helpful. This is all going to happen in perfect timing. Everything will start to make sense at some point in time when you start to talk to two or three people. Um, like not too many, just keep it like a close, small, knit circle. Now, perfect timing is talking about divine timing. It's supposed to happen when it's supposed to happen, not before. That's why you have to wait Eventually, there's going to be success. That's with an exclamation mark. So I do see success. And yes, 
Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, we have, yes, there's a balance between the sun and the moon here. Equal give and take. There's going to be a compromise going forward, which means that both of you are going to have a peaceful resolution. Very nice. So, Aries, I do see that the situation is going to improve. However, like it says, it's going to happen in divine timing. In the meantime, do have a look at who you know, who you can trust. Have a look at those people that may just seem to you as jealous and start ignoring them. Don't deal with them. Because a lot of us, we sometimes get that feeling, even if somebody's envious, but we really ignore it. The problem is those are the type of people that sometimes knowingly and unknowingly Sent o send over negative energies without them knowing. It's it's not like they do it on purpose, but it just happens. So it's best to stay with people, near people that you know, that love you, that really genuinely care for you, and talk to them about any type of issue you may have, because they will give you their advice from the bottom of their heart. They'll actually mean it. They have an invested interest. All right. For those of you that are interested in readings, please do visit my website, www.asnoitcha.com. I do have packages there that are still open, and uh, you can place an order. Please do read the description before you do place it. You'll know exactly what it is that you're going to be getting and what you should expect to receive. I also have another channel called Asnoitcha Audio, and I have relationship-related videos, spiritual connection-related videos, as well as one that was on negative energies, what and who are negative energies. So please do have a look at those, and um, I would appreciate, like, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if any of this in this reading has resonated. So it does appear that we have some external people here that may have been causing problems, a sense of immaturity, a sense of that lack of color in life, not really experiencing many things, being very inexperienced and only seeing things from that type of a perspective. Now I'm seeing a horse with those little um, covers that they have on their sides for, for their eyes just to focus in the front and not get distracted. That's what I'm seeing right now too. So yeah, your person of interest has a very narrow perspective and vision, but unfortunately they have been raised in such an environment and whatever life they've lived, this is what they've known. Sometimes it's not their fault right? Majority of the time it isn't. So when you are dealing with this person, understand that is where they're coming from. All right. Thank you for tuning in. You all take care, stay safe, and let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. All right then. Bye. See you again.